The May 2nd, 2024 special meeting board hearing, excuse me, budget hearing of the Webers Township Board of Education will please come to order. Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson. Here. Mr. Mohammed. Here. Ms. Perez. Here. Mr. Trebosser. Here. Mr. Velez. Here. And Mr. Harris. Here. Mr. Sedana is just running a few minutes late. He'll be joining us momentarily. Mr. Secretary, as required by the Sunshine Law, please read the notice of meeting. Thank you, Mr. President. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted as follows. January 25th, 2024, emailed to the Home News Tribune, the Star Ledger, and the Municipal Clerk's Office posted in Ross Street School Number 11 and the Board of Education Administration Building, also published on the School District website. Thank you, Mr. Wolferman. Would everyone please rise for a salute to the flag and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for The Wilbur's Township Board of Education welcomes and encourages active, productive, and respectful participation by members of the public and seeks to protect the First Amendment right to those who engage in the exercise of free speech at this Board of Education meeting. Members of the public are requested to express themselves in a civil manner with due respect for the dignity and privacy of those whose legal rights may be impacted. The public is now invited to speak regarding the agenda being presented this evening. When you come to the microphone, please provide your name and the section of the township in which you reside, along with the specific agenda item you wish to discuss. As per Regulation 1100D, comments must be limited to no more than five minutes. No response will be given until you have completed your opportunity to speak. Anyone wishing to speak this evening, please come to the microphone. Good evening, Paul Lund, Hope Lawn. Hi. Just to be sure, it seems the agenda item is very straightforward. It is the budget, right, in finance? That's correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I did a little calculation. Being a math teacher, I, I took the number for the budget, 362682367 divided it by the number of students as of this writing was 13832 and I arrived at $23,898 per student. Um, and I just, I'm guessing uh, it's accurate, but if it's in, in the ballpark, I'm wondering if you can confirm that for me. Um, and then the last question, it seems the prior year budget was 330560000 and change. So we're looking at a 30 million year over year increase. So uh, probably a little bit less than 10%. I just wanna make sure my, my uh, figures are, are roughly in the ballpark. Are those your only two questions this evening? Okay, great. Uh, yes, so your, your mathematical calculation is accurate. However, the Department of Education, as Mr. Wolfman, who I'll defer to here, will tell you that that's generally not how they calculate the per student spending. There are certain items that are certainly out of there. Okay. Mr. Wolfman, did you want to allude yeah. to, uh, to address that any further? Do you know which dollar amounts are typically sure. not calculated? Um, Mr. Lund, yeah, uh, as Mr. Harris has said, the way to calculate a, a per student cost is not necessarily just looking at that. If you want to email me, I can get you that information um, so that you have an accurate number for it. And again, with last year's compared to this year's, you're looking at only a, uh, you know, a snapshot of what's here. Mm -hmm. But email me, and I'm happy to provide all that data for you. Thank you very much. And, and your question regarding year over year spending, we were fortunate to get another $24 million from the from the state uh, via state aid, uh, we get additional uh, uh, monies through uh, you know Medicaid as well as uh, you know finally the two percent tax increase that's associated with um, you know the the tax levy increase. Mm -hmm. However, as you may have read through tap into or if you watched our our meeting yesterday or excuse me last week, you heard that we're taking money out of surplus and we're paying down debt, which 
cumulatively, as Mr. Wolferman could tell you in far greater detail, mm -hmm. results in a net negative or net reduction in uh, the tax levy this year on residents, on okay. the average household. Good news. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. Anybody else wishing to speak? No? All right. With that, we'll go over to the finance and insurance agenda. Mr. Trebowasser. Thank you, Mr. President. The Finance and Insurance Committee on recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Business Administrator Board Secretary presents the following one item. I move for the adoption of the foregoing. I have a motion by Mr. Trebowasser. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Trebowasser, seconded by Ms. Perez. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Seeing none, roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Muhammad. Yes. Ms. Perez. Yes. Mr. Trebowasser. Yes. Mr. Velez. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Is there any old business? This should be brought before the board this evening. Any new business from the board? Seeing none. And lastly, in keeping with past practice, we will now open up the meeting for public comment. When you come to the microphone, please provide your name and the section of the township in which you reside. As per Regulation 1100D, comments must be limited to no more than five minutes. No response will be given until you've completed your opportunity to speak. Anyone else wishing to speak? Paul Lund, Hope Lawn. I have to look up uh, the page I had a second ago, so I may use some of my five minutes for that purpose. Thank you. And this is based on uh, President Harris' comments you made at the last discussion at Town Hall over the new elementary school or the... Okay. Uh, and um, your concern over a couple charter schools uh, pulling some students out of the, uh, the zip code schools or the main schools. In Arizona, there's 77,340 uh, students that benefit from what I learned about uh, recently, something called an empowerment scholarship account. And it's described as parents having the right to choose what's best for their family and have their education tax dollars pay for the school that meets their child's needs. I think we have to uh, recognize that there's diverse needs, whether it's special needs or uh, needs of um, conscience. You know, not everyone agrees with, with DEI. They find it to be very divisive and disempowering to children. Not everyone agrees with, with uh, teaching second graders that uh, gender is a choice. With the ESA program, the money that would pay for that student's education in a neighborhood school follows that student to whichever school the parents choose for their child, including education at home. ESA dollars cover multiple education expenses, such as private school tuition, curricula, educational supplies, tutoring, and more. And my question is, what's wrong with that? Is that your only question this evening? It is. Okay. All right, great. Well, I will. New Jersey, we don't we don't have a. I, you know, I'll speak from this from a professional standpoint as well. We don't have a, a voucher program like some other states do, where taxpayers, if you will, or parents could take a sum of money that the government provides them to go shopping and, and choose a school that are they're liking. That's that's something New Jersey has. Uh, as a matter of fact, there, there actually is a proposal before the legislature. I couldn't tell you where that's going to go. We've seen that in the past. Governor Christie had the uh, Opportunity Scholarship Act proposal back in the day that, that ultimately never went anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, as you know, uh, yeah, I think you've taught at Catholic schools and other uh, non-publics. Non uh, professionally, uh, parents have certainly the, the right to, to choose to send their, their children to those schools. They have a right to homeschool their children as well. Uh, but uh, there, there isn't money that, that follows that. Right. And I think New Jersey's position has been that uh, tax dollars are not a la carte where you get to sim choose, pick and choose where, where and how that money is spent. You, you, you get the right uh, at uh, every November at the general election to choose how your, how your government operates. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my position on it. I couldn't speak for the state of New Jersey up here on why 
certain programs do and, and don't exist. So that's, uh, that's my take on it. I can tell you from a charter school standpoint, we have uh, 80 students uh, projected next year to attend charter schools, attending nine different charter schools in, in the region, from Newark to Plainfield to Franklin to New Brunswick to Perth Amboy. 80 so, for that whole region? Yeah, 80 okay. for, for just Woodbridge Township, uh, oh, Woodbridge the number Township. of students that, that happened to attend charter schools. And of course, I think last year when we were going through the aid in lieu of transportation matter that, that came up when the state didn't provide us as much aid in lieu of transportation to provide transportation to our non-public students. Mm -hmm. I think there's nine Catholic schools that, uh, that our students uh, happen to attend, whether a, a St. Joe's or a St. Thomas. And uh, uh, oh, I, I apologize, I lost my train of thought where I was headed with that. But, um, you know, that's, so to, to buttress your argument to, to some degree is we have many families in our community who, who elect to, to send their students to, to a non-public school district. And we have students and parents who send their students to, to county vocational schools, the, right. the middle six magnet schools. So right. there's, there's, there's choice today yeah. and people exercise it for sure. Yeah, it's just de facto difficult for a parent like myself. I'm paying between my state income tax and 60% of my property tax, around 7,000 a year is going toward the public school system. And now if I had children I wanted to put in parochial and pay tuition on top of that, it, it's, it's prohibitive, and that's why I asked, you know. And you guys don't, it's not a state option right now. My question was what your take, would you welcome the competition, basically? Well, I think the competition already exists there today. So if, okay. and I, I think we, we provide a, a competitive education that uh, I, sort of disappointed that these students and their families decide to, to go out of district uh, to the charters. I, I think we, we provide a, a better experience because I, uh, last year we have about 55 of our students attend the uh, Middlesex County STEM Academy. It's the Perth Amboy Charter School. Right. I, I elected to go check it out. How uh, of 55 of our students are going there? Why? You know, uh, what are they doing better than us? And uh, you know, they seem to be a caring uh, community, but frankly, I thought our facilities are far better, and I, we offer competitive salaries to our, to our teachers, and um, uh, I, I would put up our educational program next to theirs any day of the week. Okay. Thank you, President You're Harris. welcome. Thank you much. Right. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Anybody else wishing to speak this evening? Uh, good evening, John Vertonic. Hi. I don't know. I don't know what was said or not before, but uh, you know the question was that people were very concerned because of number. You know, you talk about again 10 percent from last year. I uh, we don't know previous year before that how much was it. People just care because we all know things are not easy over there. Uh, are those things planned before uh, some federal grants were supposed to come into the budget or state or federal or somebody else? But it's just a, a, a big, big, big number. When you tell people how, how much the school board meeting, school board budget, they kind of say, you can't believe it. I said, well, that's what it is. You know, we used to make fun of it when they used to say the Osbury Park School costs $35,000 to send a kid to Osbury Park School and they were failing schools. And uh, I don't know, we are close to it or something, but you took a $367 million for 40 some thousand kids, that's an awful lot of money. Uh, Question would be that what I would ask is the what's going to happen next year? It's going to go same thing, another ten percent. Year after ten percent, ten. This is not a now and you know not for a while because uh, if you look at it, it's not easy. They talk to the people like most of us do. Uh, they're crying. They're crying. You know, he said. And, you know, and most what I don't like to hear is so what do they do pay because I don't have kids in schools no more. I said, well, somebody pay when your kids went to school. I agree with it. Now, you people do a great job. And I mean, if you look for some other source before you kind of uh, make a decision, I'm sure you did already. But again, the question would be additional schools you're going to have to build. There's going to be additional money that's going to come to the average taxpayers. <laughs> and I don't know when you take the, all those, uh, what you call it, the, 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 we call them warehouses, all those uh, projects, you know, all those stuff, stuff. Are they affected too? because they don't pay school taxes, so they don't care. And it only comes to the average taxpayer, average working man, like Paul just said, every individual. Uh, 
I don't say you are, you are kind of uh, um, throwing it away. I, I agree with it. But again, can we look into it, kind of uh, tighten the belt a little bit and see before the, all this money is coming from? Because we don't know what's going to happen next year, yeah, next year, next year. And it's, uh, it's scary. You know, we don't want to scare the people. They're going to turn around and say, get, let, me, let me get the hell out of here. You know, how many people I meet over those years that I moved to Carolina, I moved here, there, why, why, why? Texas. Texas, Texas. Then I did talk to a person, friend of mine, just went to Carolina, they supposed to move there two months, and they decided not to go there because they said, well, listen, you know, uh, you got a 9% sales tax over there, which I didn't know. Most of us probably don't know. My, my uh, social security would be taxed 79% if I moved there. So some people just go because of a property tax is high. And it's not the people with the money, I would say that's people with the, you know, they don't have that kind of money. But we gotta take care of them to stay here. You know, it's, it's not, not a, that, I don't see people with a big more money coming to Woodbridge, period. You follow me? I don't see people from exclusive communities move to Woodbridge. I've been 60 years here. I don't see those people coming here. We know it's coming, it's coming. People, those people who are penny pinching, and like now, most are living in apartments. And of course, the landlord is going to have to raise the tax. The tick tick is, I don't say you didn't do it, but I said, let's look into it. Because the last couple of years, we got a lot of money from the state, from the governor. Are we going to get any more money? Because 10% from somebody has to pay for this budget. So if you can hold on something not to do it now, of course, as like I said before, if you build a new schools, you're going to buy it again for new schools. And uh, it's scary, you know. That's all I want to say. I'm sorry I wasn't earlier, so know what's going on. But I'm telling you what people are telling me. What people that we, we talk about it. So I'm sure they're probably telling you too. Sure. And uh, you, we hear things. I, I, I do sure. believe you make a right decision. But again, let's ask for help from somebody else to help us. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. As uh, noted earlier, the uh, the the jump in the size of the budget, 95% of it was attributable to the, the aid in um, the, the last payment, if you will, of what the state was ramping up on school aid. Uh, this was, as you know, Mr. Wolferman may call it in his field in accounting, it was like a balloon payment. 24 million of our 127 million in state aid was this year. And this now becomes, you know, I, I can tell you professionally, this becomes sort of a plateau in year seven of seven of a seven year ramp up. So this should be our number. And I know uh, in conversations with Dr. Massimino and Mr. Wolferman that this becomes sort of the baseline for us. We shouldn't expect a dramatic increase or a dramatic decrease relative to school aid because the school aid formula has been in place since 2008, approved by the New Jersey Supreme Court, and it should remain uh, level from here on out. And the formula goes back to money following the students. So unless we have 100 students move out of our district next year or gain 100 students, would our, would our numbers fluctuate significantly? So uh, we're, we're pleased to have that, that uh, state support from the state. And uh, as I pointed out uh, b before the, the most recent speaker got here, was that we are being responsible with that money. There's, there's not a significant increase in, in, uh, in programmatic spending. In fact, for the first time in our first opportunity that we had to do so, now that we have uh, flat school funding, is that we provided a, a tax decrease, which is a significant deal. Uh, as I pointed out in a couple of writings as board president, that for years, Woodbridge Township taxpayers were carrying a larger load of the tax burden because of the state was under was underfunding us. Now our first opportunity to uh, show respect and appreciation to our taxpayers, we're sending money back to them. So uh, that concludes my remarks. Uh, unless anyone else wishes to speak this evening, the chair will entertain, entertain a motion to adjourn. So motion. I have a motion by Mr. Treepwasser. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sedana. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you on May 16th.